Belly dance, also known as Oriental dance, is one of the world's oldest and most beautiful dance forms. In Arabic, the female solo dance is called Rak Sharki, which means dance of the East. Even though its origins are unclear, many scholars and historians subscribe to the theory of the Gypsy Trail, which follows the notion that belly dance originated with temple dancers in northern India and was spread by gypsies along a path that split into two, one side going into Turkey and Eastern Europe, the other side going through the Middle East and North Africa. In the dances indigenous to all those countries, you can see similarities, head slides, wrist circles, hip and torso, undulations and articulations. Even though Egypt and Turkey claim that those countries both started it. Belly dancing doesn't just work out your belly, it'll strengthen and tone your entire body. And it also looks really beautiful on women of all ages, shapes and sizes. In fact, it actually looks better when you've got a few curves. As with any exercise program, make sure you consult your physician before starting. Okay, now let's get started on the basics of Egyptian dance. To begin warming up, we'll stretch up. Open your arms, come down flat back. Really feel that stretch up the back of your legs. Drop down and let your head hang and breathe. Roll up slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae. And stretch up again. Open. Flat back. Drop. Breathe. Roll up. Stretch. Open. Flat back. Drop your head. Roll up. And one more time. Stretch up, open, flat back, drop, roll up slowly, and we're going to roll our necks around to the count of eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, other side, two, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to roll our shoulders back, backwards, eight counts, and roll back, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and alternate, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to slide our ribs to each side of the room without moving the shoulders, like your ribs are sliding on a little track. Slide, slide, no, no shoulder movement, just the ribs, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and fast, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to separate the zip codes of our body to above the navel and below the navel. Now we're just going to move below the navel, sliding your hips from side to side, slowly at first, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and faster, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, slow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and quick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
And we're going to move our hips up, out, and over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to stretch up. Come down again in flat back. Drop our heads. Sweep around to the left. Come up flat back. And stretch back. Down on the left flat back. Sweep around. Come up flat back on the right. And stretch back. Down. Sweep around to the left. Come up and stretch back. Come down, flat back. Sweep around to the right. And stretch. And one more time on each side. And down, flat back. Walk your head. Roll up slowly. Now we're going to stretch out our hamstrings and our Achilles tendons by getting down on the floor, your palms on the floor, you're on the balls of your feet, you're going to stretch your shoulders into the floor, and your butt up towards the ceiling, and stretching up, and push down your heels into the ground, and stretch up, and push down. And stretch up and push down and alternate pushing your heels into the floor like you're riding a bicycle. Walk your hands and feet together. Roll up slowly. Your posture is very important for belly dancing. You want to make sure that your knees are slightly bent, never locked tight. You want to, you want to have them bent so that you can move your knees and your hips, so keep them loose and bent. Your butt is tucked under. It'll protect your back in the long run. Your rib cage is lifted. Your shoulders are back and down. And your arms will be here or here. Some basic arm positions. You want to keep your shoulders relaxed and down. Your elbows will be up facing the back of the room. Your arms slightly rounded, like you're holding a big basket. Your hands almost ballet-like. Or you can frame the area of your body that's working. Or you can use your hands in opposition. You can simply keep them up. Now for some basic hip movements. We'll start off standing on the left side with the knees slightly bent. Keep your feet as close together as possible because it'll make your hips pop out a little more. We're going to frame the right working hip with the right hand and we're going to articulate the hip up by straightening the knee and up and up. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to go down. In order to go down, the hip has to come up and the accent is down. Make sure that you don't let your, the non-working side fall out. You want to keep it isolated only on the working side. So it looks like this, down, down, not down, no, down, and down, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, and switch down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch and down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and. I want to remind you to keep your butt tucked under, your rib cage lifted, your shoulders back and down. And now we're going to go down and brush up in a little kick with a pointed toe. You don't want to look like a scary farmer. So we're going to go down, brush, and down, brush, two, brush, three, brush, four, brush, five, brush, six, brush, seven, switch, down, brush, two, brush, three, brush, four, brush, five, brush, six, brush, seven, switch, down, brush, two, brush, three, brush, four, brush, five, brush, six, brush, seven, switch, one last time, down, brush, two, brush, three, brush, four, brush, five, brush, six, brush, seven, brush, eight. Now we're going to do a hip circle. So I always imagine that I have magic markers on my hips, and I'm going to draw a little circle on the floor using only my hips. My upper body remains stable. Circle. Circle. Nice fat circle drawn by your hips on the floor. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, remember to keep your posture. Now we're gonna circle on one side only. So you just flip up this magic marker and keep the right side drawn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and. The next movement is called the big hip circle, which is the same as a small one, but you're putting your whole body into it and drawing a big, giant circle on the floor with your hips. This is why I like to do all the flat back warm-up stretches. And I also call this a butt wipe because you want to wipe your butt across the back of the room, and that way you know you're doing it precisely. The traditional butt wipe. <laughs> okay, so the movement of this without any of the arms or anything is a half a circle, finish the circle. Big half of a circle, finish the circle. I like to come up into it, drifting down. The weight is all on the right side now. Wipe. The weight's on the left. Come up and pose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and.
Now I'm going to show a little combination using a big hip circle, some downward accents, and a little circle on one side going backwards. And this goes down, two, three, four, push through, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and down, two, three, four, circle, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and down, side, side, back, push through, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and down, side, side, back, push through, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I shimmy is one of the basic moves of belly dancing. And in order to get a good loose shimmy, where your whole body moves, you want to make sure that your knees are working. So from the side, it would look like this. In slow motion. You want to make sure your knees are really pumping. And you can make a shimmy bigger or tighten it up. You never want to lock your knees because then you wouldn't be able to move forward with the shimmy. There are certain shimmies where you lock that are called freezes. There's all different kinds of shimmies, but this is the, a good basic. Traveling steps are a good way to cover a lot of ground in a, in a quick fashion or to get you somewhere and not cover a lot of ground um, in a good way. Hippie. If you're doing steps like, like, an, like an up hip traveling choo-choo, you don't want to have your legs and feet far apart because it's not only going to make your hip action less, it looks clumsy. You want to keep your feet almost on top of each other and take very small baby steps. So for the up hip traveling, you're going to be doing an up hip accent out to the side and the side that's not working is going to sort of just follow along like this. So it's just up, 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 up. Let's try it. Two eights to each side. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down hip is the same, but the accent is down. Down, 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 down. And down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. Down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. Down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. Down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Basic Egyptian walk is a good traveling step and one of the most basic. Walking like an Egyptian is not like this. You will step, touch, Pivot your hip up and step on that foot. Touch, pivot, step on that foot. Step, touch, pivot, step, touch, pivot. And backwards, step back, touch, pivot up. Step back, pivot, step back, pivot, step back, pivot, step back, pivot, step back, pivot. And from the side, basic Egyptian will look like this. Step. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and. Let's try it counting. And step two, three, four, five, six, seven, and step back. Two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, and These two steps are good entrance walks, but can also be used in the middle of a dance. And they can cover a lot of ground or a little amount of space, just depending on how you use them. The first one, step together step, can be done small to give a lot of hip action, or you can do it larger for an entrance walk. Step together step, 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 and back, step together step, step together step, step together step, step together step. The next walk is a hip slide walk, which my friends and I refer to as Charming Girl, because it's kind of like a model catwalk walk. It's got attitude. It's kind of like a showgirl strut, but it's a little bit more hip action. It's a nice, slow entrance walk, especially with the veil. For hand movements, there is circle out. You're making an outward circle. Circle in. You can practice these just by stretching. In, out, in, out. And there's also a circle out and pinch, which will look like this. You want your arms to look like they're drifting through fog. Some resistance, like the arms are featherweight, but you're really slow and languid about whatever you're doing with your arms. So, I'm going to circle up. Touch, open, drift down slowly. Cross, circle up, touch, open, and drift down. Cross, circle up, touch, open, and drift down. Cross, drift up. Touch and polish down. Drift up. Touch. Open and polish down. Drift up. Touch. Open. Slowly polish down. And drift up. Touch. Open and polish down. Now we're going to act like we're taking off our t-shirt. Up, open, circle down. And again, up, open, circle down. Really like you're in no hurry. Up, open, circle down. And one more time. Up, open, circle down. The next movement is going to start with a backward shoulder roll. You're going to roll back and reach with the energy extending out. Roll and reach, 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 lean into it, roll and reach, roll and reach. Roll and reach, roll and reach. And now we're going to do snake arms. Your arm comes up, led by the elbow. And as one arm's coming up, the other arm's coming down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Now we're going to 
do plucking grapes from honey slowly. This looks nice with the back bend slightly. You can make it bigger or smaller. And we'll cross forward and open, leading from the wrists. Cross and open, cross and open, cross and open, and down and up, out, open, up, out, open, drift down, up, out, open, and one more time, up, out, open, now we're going to frame our thing, wrist circles, you can slide your head if you want, you can just keep it stationary. Now let's try the same arm exercises, keeping a sustained shimmy going. When you do a shimmy on top of another step, it's called layering. So we'll start, circle up, touch, open, drift down, cross, and circle up, touch, open, drift down, Keep those knees moving. Circle up. Touch. Open. Drift down. And circle up. Touch. Open. Drift down. Cross. Drift up. Polish down. Keep shimmying. Drift up. Touch. Polish down, drift up, touch, polish down, one more time, drift up, touch, polish down, cross, up, and circle down, cross, up, and circle down. Make sure you're shimmying. Cross. Up. Circle down. Cross. Up. Circle down. And roll and reach. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Snake arms, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Plucking grapes from honey and shimmy. Meaning on the back leg. Smaller. Forward cross, out, cross, out, cross, out, cross, out, and up, out, open, drift down, up, out, open, drift down, up, out, open, and one more time, up, out. Open and frame your head. Keep shimmying. And relax. For figure eights, you want to make sure, once again, that you're separated at the belly button. So only the lower part of your body is moving and you want to make the movements as slow and as smooth as possible to get that floating look, which is actually really hard. You want to not just have the movements be slow, but you want to have a calm, serene face just to belie the fact that you're working so hard <laughs> at getting a smooth figure eight. 
Um, also, don't be surprised if when you're practicing, you think you're doing a forward eight and the eight is actually going backwards. It's really common when you're sending signals from your brain to your hips to go a little bit dyslexic and think that up is down or backwards is forwards, whatever. Don't, don't let that stop you. It stopped me for a while, but I kept on like a trooper. Anyway, the first movement we're going to do is a forward figure eight. So with your little magic markers mounted on the hips, you're going to be drawing a nice big fat eight on the floor coming forward. So it's going to come forward, cross, forward to make a big fat eight. You want to make sure both sides of the eight are round and even. You want to make sure that one side is not skinnier than the other. Make sure they're both equal with the crossbar of the eight being forward. You can lift up your feet a little bit if you want. It's not necessary. However, you, you can make yourself move to get it nice and smooth. So we're going to go forward and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Now let's try backwards. It's exactly the same as forwards, but you're going backwards. One, two, three, four. So the movement is going backwards. It's still a big fat eight on the floor. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to move the magic markers up. So you're going to be tagging the wall. You're going to do an eight on the wall coming upwards. So it's up and in, up and in. The figure eight is actually going this way. Up and in, up and in. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to extend the upward eight. So when one hip comes up, you will lean out with the opposing shoulder, like this. I call this the Axel Rose. So this is more like an infinity sign than an actual figure eight. And again, you're drawing the figure eight on the wall. Let's try it. And one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you want to make sure that you keep your pelvis and abdomen flat forward. You don't want to scoop forward, keep it flat when you're practicing an upward eight. Now we're going to do a downwards figure eight, also on the wall, a big fat eight again. Some dancers call this step the Maya. So the movement's going to be up, out, down, and over. Up, out, down, and over. I like to use my feet Sometimes getting up on the balls of the foot gives me a higher extension. And you also have to be really careful about keeping your knees together because you don't, you don't want a bow-legged cowpoke sort of look. You want to keep your knees together and let your hips do all the work. Up, up, down, and over. And one, two, three, four, five, six, 
set and end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. You can also do a Maya with a level change up or down. Okay, the first undulation we're going to do is a camel. And it's a little push with your pelvis. Push forward, push. So you're going to go push, step back, push, step back, push, back. It's an easy little push. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to do a camel with a chest lift. A chest lift is just like taking a deep breath, but without the big side face. So you're going to lift, lift. So push, step, lift, step. Push, step, lift, step. And push, step, lift, step. Push, step, lift, step. Push, step. Lift, step, push, step, change sides, push, step, lift, push, lift, push, lift, push, lift. A rib cage camel. It's another magic marker movement. The way I see it, you're going to be drawing a big oval on the wall with the rib cage. So you lean forward, pull up, and then to draw, the elbow sink down, pull up, sink down. And when you do it forward, it looks like this. You don't want to get your shoulders involved. You want just your ribs to be moving. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, 